Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here, coming to you from a very chilly spring day here in my southeastern Wisconsin Zone 5B garden. Uh, but there's a good reason to be out in the garden today, and that's because today I'm going to tell you about some plants that will bring magic to your garden. So a big thank you to Junk Seed for partnering with me on this video because they have provided this little bit of magic for the garden. Now I'm not trying to be dramatic about this garden. Now I'm not trying to be dramatic about this magic thing. I really think it's true. You know, there are plants that we put in our gardens because they work to make the whole garden as a whole do something wonderful, or maybe they look great when people are driving by, or maybe they, um, they look great when someone's sitting on your deck and you're having a dinner party, they can look out over a great plant. These are plants that you are only planting for yourself. And I mean, obviously nature as well. There are benefits to these as well. But in terms of humans who will appreciate these plants, these are for you because these are spring ephemerals. So today I am planting three native woodland plants that are all spring ephemerals. And spring ephemerals are just plants that come up, do their thing in spring, and then they just disappear. Now, some of these you might know of that are quite common are things like uh, Virginia bluebells are one, uh, bloodroot is another. I can actually show you what all those are looking like in my garden already. But first, I want to tell you about the three that I am really excited to be adding to my garden. So I'm going to be adding Trillium grandifolium. That is the kind of sort of the main trillium that people think of. It's the white one with the white flowers. My garden used to be full of these and the deer have eaten them pretty badly and then I think also some areas have changed and there's been more sun as trees have fallen down. Um, so there aren't as many here as there used to be and I don't think you can find a more charming plant than a trillium. And then the two that I'm adding that I don't actually have are Dutchman's breeches which is a dicentra so same family as bleeding heart and then shooting star which is absolutely charming and I have never grown before. So the key thing to plant these is to pick the right spot. And that is the most important part about planting these spring ephemerals because these want woodland soil. These are woodland plants. They are not gonna be happy in heavy clay. They're not gonna be happy in full sun. So imagine a forest floor um, sort of in the um, kind of dappled light of a tree. Plant them there. Now, fortunately, I happen to have a lot of areas that are like that. And uh, my soil tends to work really well here because most of this has always been sort of just forest floor type stuff. The leaves stay, they break down. It's this wonderfully rich humusy soil. Near this rock, I've got some trilliums that I planted uh, several years ago. So I'm gonna go away from that rock and I'm kinda gonna go to a different spot. So in addition to planting these in kind of nice humusy, uh, woodlandy type soil, uh, plant these near the edge of the path. Don't bury these somewhere. You want to be able to see these um, and you're going to have to walk to see them. They're not going to put on a big enough show that you're going to see them out the window. So put them somewhere where you meander or you want to meander and plant them there. Uh, they also want moist soil, so don't stick them right at the base of a tree or something like that. They need a little bit of moisture to keep them happy. So I'm going to look around here and find the perfect spot because I'm going to plant all three of these together so I have this fabulous little bit of magic. So over here is what we call Roy's garden. This is the garden I worked on with Roy Dibelik. And then I sort of spread that from the edges. But over here in this area, I think would be a great spot to plant these because we walk on this path all the time. Now these are all coming as bare root rhizomes. So it's actually a great time for me to plant these. The window for planting these is not super wide. So you want to get these in when everything's still dormant. None of these things are up in my garden at this point. Well, none of the ones I'm planting here would be. Now, I don't expect to see these flower this year. These plants do take time to get used to the soil and flower. Now, if you plant a trillium from seed, I think it's like seven years before it flowers. So give them time. Make sure you don't disturb them. Give them a nice humusy soil um, and moisture, but not wetness. So most of these plants are going to have their native area be 
um, mostly on the eastern half of the country. Actually, it extends farther west than the Mississippi River, but like literally split the country in half. Um, and they're native to the eastern side and really quite far south. And then they actually um, also um, are um, uh, grow wild and whether they're native there or not, but they grow wild there in I think some of these uh, in some western areas too. So pretty wide range for these plants. But here's the important part to bring up here. It is never ever ever okay to go harvest these plants yourself from a woods or a field or anywhere else um, unless I guess you have a friend who has them and they say you can take them. But never go find these in a park and go dig these up. Please don't do that. They're really um, special plants and we need to protect them, which is part of the reason why I'm growing more of these because I think we should have more of these. Now, it's also really important that you buy these from a reputable source. Do not buy these from an online, random online seller or something like that. Go to an established garden center or nursery. And then when they're selling these, look for something in the description saying that these are um, sustainably harvested from a um, licensed area because you can no one is allowed to go dig these out of the ground and then go sell them so look for that notification that they are selling these now one such reputable source is Jung Seed who I'm partnering with on this video and I am so honored to do that because I love Jung Seed they are a family owned Wisconsin company and they've been in the business for over a hundred years um, they are they've been in this whole garden center nursery game for ages and they know what they're doing uh, so i was really happy to see that they are offering these natives because these are not easy to find these little woodland plants um, they're very hard to find in nurseries because they look like nothing in the pots and you don't necessarily want to buy them later on it's it's hard to find a good planting window for these um, like i said uh, now or even earlier as soon as i could work the ground would have been um, a good opportunity for this and if you do need to divide them, which you probably never need, there's no need to do it, but if you want to, you could, you should do that in summer when they're dormant and they will go fully dormant. So you really have to mark them well to know where you're going. Um, and that's about the, the planting window for these things. So you really have to kind of be on the ball. This is not a time of year when you're likely going to find them looking like much in garden centers, which is why most garden centers don't carry them. So the hard part about growing these plants is finding them from a reputable source and then finding the right spot to put them in. Uh, once you manage those two things, uh, the rest of it is really quite easy. So I'm just gonna open this up. You guys have all seen bare root things before. I mean, it's not exactly the most impressive thing, but I promise you, this will turn into the most impressive thing, at least for you, because again, remember, not for the neighbors, this one's just for you. Now the trilliums are what I'm gonna plant first. And like I said, I've got three of each and I'm gonna plant them um, just in a nice little clump here. And the trilliums wanna be planted five inches deep, which is deeper than uh, most of these other ones wanna be. But it says right here on the bag, five inches deep, which is awfully nice. So this one actually has a bit of a shoot on it already. And I am fortunate, I happen to have just a lot of areas that are about perfect uh, so in terms of soil for these. If you want to grow these in a place where you don't have, you know, aren't blessed with the kind of soil that I tend to have in this area, you know, you can amend your soil and, uh, and do that, but it's probably a process that will take a little bit of time. So I would recommend... Um, I would recommend sort of starting that process with an eye to doing this in the future. I've got a lot of sweet woodruff growing in here, so I do need to create a an area that is not overrun by sweet woodruff for these little guys. I don't have a plant marker, but I'm going to stick this flag in here for right now and I will come back with a plant marker for these. Now the Dutchman's breeches and the shooting stars are really simple. They only want to be planted about an inch deep. So that is quite easy to accommodate. It won't take any time at all. You can plant these pretty close to one another. They'll sort of colonize when they're happy. I mean, here we go. Tiny little guy. Oh wow. All right. So here's the shooting stars. 
these are actually quite a bit bigger than the other ones. So I'm going to dig down just a little bit more because um, we want the tops about an inch, an inch deep. And I'm just going to kind of spread these roots out a little bit, make the little funnel. Okay, that's it. I'm just going to bring over a little bit of water in a watering can just to slightly moisten this area. If anything, I'll do like a slight mulch of um, like just shredded leaves on there if I feel like I need to do that. I really don't. This area is pretty much like self mulch. Probably not necessary. Now, like I said, I don't expect to see flowers this year, but I think maybe next year we might. And imagine how wonderful that will be when I'm walking to the vegetable garden or something and I look to my left and there are these beautiful blooming flowers. So while none of these are coming up my garden now, I just want to show you a couple other spring ephemerals that are something to look at at least right now in the garden um, because you can get a little taste of the magic then. Now these things look a little bit like alien creatures coming out of the ground, but these are May apples. Uh, I didn't plant these here. They planted themselves here. They come in these kind of funny little knobs and then they start unfurling and then they open up into these um, little umbrellas. Just beyond those, in addition to some garlic mustard weed, here's a, quite a fun little um, spring ephemeral woodland native plant. That's ramps, uh, as in uh, wild garlic and it's delicious. Now this little guy is one of my favorites. This is bloodroot and it comes up in these little white flowers. Now they grow in these little clumps. They'll just spread around. Um, I do have a double form of this as well, but this is the single form. And maybe my favorite one of all is this one that blooms in the creek. It's a kind of a bog plant. Planted itself there, grows all along the sides here. It's March, March Marigold, and it has the most charming, beautiful flowers, these round green leaves. And it just really, I, I couldn't love a plant more than I love this guy. Tiny little ball shaped buds, then these beautiful yellow flowers. All right, so that's my pitch to you to add some spring ephemerals to your garden. I assure you it will bring you a great amount of joy when you run into them and add just a little bit of magic to your garden. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.